Honey, you seem a little down this morning. I, I know things were rushed last night and this morning, but what's wrong? Well, this really isn't the time or the place, but you may as well know. Jeff married that nurse, you know, in Carson City. Well, I guess I'm not too surprised. How did Ann take the news? Well, that's why I'm a little down, I guess. Well, just give her a little time, Audrey. She'll get over the shock. Personally, maybe, but she certainly made a mess of her professional situation. Did something happen at the hospital I should know about? Well, it didn't exactly happen at the hospital, and as far as knowing about it, Anne has been the talk of the town for days, and I'm sure you will hear all the gory details. What did she do? Well, she dressed up in a ridiculous outfit, and she arrived at Arthur Bradshaw's banquet, ranting and raving. Oh, no. Was she drinking? No, well, that was the least of it. I, she, she stood up right in the middle of his speech, and she accused him. Oh, Steve, it was awful. Well, come on, Audrey, tell me. Well, she accused him of helping to put an end to a patient's life. I, I mean, she accused him of negligence, claiming that he was in such a hurry to get to his own banquet. What on earth has gotten to that girl? Now, now please, darling, do stay calm. How can I? Anne was such a sweet person when she first came to stay with us. Well, she's still a sweet person. Then why is she acting so irrationally? Darling, you know that as well as I. Was for, I mean, it was first Diana and then Miss Heather and then Jeff. She's been under an awful lot of emotional stress. Audrey, I can't allow emotions to influence hospital behavior. Well, I agree with that, but Steve... But, but what, Audrey? You know as well as I do that Anne is scheduled to graduate as a scrub nurse tomorrow? I know. And she's done a fine job. I was against her training to begin with, but she's proved to be very worthy. Now, now Steve, you're not going to do anything drastic. I, I don't know what I'm going to do just yet, but one, one point is clear. Her behavior deserves some sort of official action. I'm sorry, Arthur, but that's it. I uh, read your memo, Arthur, and I, I really can't blame you for being upset. And you agree that Ann Logan's behavior the night of my banquet was a disgrace? I certainly won't try to defend it. Well, I appreciate that. Noah Drake and some of the other members of the staff have made efforts on her behalf. Now, I, I realize she's been under severe emotional pressure, but there comes a time when personal problems should have nothing to do with work. Exactly my point of view. So what do you intend to do about it? Well, I've given the situation a lot of thought, and I've decided that a public apology posted right here in the cafeteria would be acceptable. Yeah, I already discussed that with Noah. And did you find it satisfactory? I said I did, but it's minimal at best. Thank you, Alvin. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Alvin. Ah, see, I imagine um, that means you got the divorce papers, did you? Oh, yes, a lovely gesture to start my day. I can think of better ways to send them out. Oh, come on, Alan. Spare the sentiment, please. I really would like to be civilized about it. You know, I can think of a hundred words right now to describe my feelings, but civilized isn't one of them. How do you feel? Surprised, mostly. Or maybe astounded is a more appropriate word. I really never thought you would muster up enough courage. Then possibly I'm more of a man than you ever gave me credit for. And I suppose you're proving it by demanding partial custody of your son. I'm going to fight as hard as I have to to get custody of him. Wonderful, you do that, because I'm going to fight too, and a lot harder. You go ahead and do that as well, but don't be too sure of yourself. Oh, I happen to be very sure. But don't worry, darling. I'll make sure your son sends you a Father Day card. Monica, no matter what our marital status is, I intend to have a very close relationship with my son. You mean a very close relationship with his money, don't you? <laughs> you know what? You act and you speak as if the inheritance never entered your mind. I'm sure it's in the forefront of your brain every waking hour of every day. Actually, it isn't. No, I never think about it. Because I know I will never lose control of either my son or his money. I don't know how much control you're going to have over him once he learns how to read. What is that supposed to mean? It means I'm sure that he's going to find a certain deposition very interesting reading. You wouldn't dare. You try me. All right, then. Don't you forget I have a tape recording of yours that isn't going to be exactly music to his ears. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> oh, yes, I would. And it'll be a lot easier to follow. There aren't so many big words unless you want to count the four-letter ones. Aha! The child's bride-to-be. Or should I say it's bride-to-be with child? Easy with the darts, Monica. There's nothing more annoying than a woman who's been defeated. Oh, and you think I've been defeated? I do indeed. 
What's more, I'm enjoying every minute of it. Yes, you always did settle for less, didn't you, Susan? Not this time. Because for once in my life, I've got exactly what I want. Alan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, you can just wipe that little smile off your face, my dear, because, you see, you've given me exactly what I want. And that is my freedom and power. Thank you. Good day, Mr. Quartermain. Good. Did you say good? <laughs> Think again, young man. I take it things aren't going your way. You know, one of the attributes that I admire most about you, Randall, is your astuteness. Any messages? Here you go, sir. Well, by the way, you might be interested to know that your wife's been... Looking for Robert Scorpio. Just what I don't need now, that kangaroo on my case. Alan, before you say one word, I want you to know that I am in a lousy mood and will not tolerate any further upset. What has Mother done this time? I don't want to talk about your mother. I want to talk about you. Oh. Now, Alan, tell me something wonderful. Something that'll really brighten my day. Tell me you have finally come to your senses and are going to move back into the house. I did the exact opposite. Alan, I can't take any more of this. Neither can I. That's why Monica was served with her divorce papers this morning. Excuse me. Well, I don't believe it. I just don't believe that you really want this divorce. And I can't believe you're finding this so hard to accept. For heaven's sakes, Gail, I've been talking about it for years. You know, talk and reality are two oh. different animals. For heaven's sakes, Monica. Late, lately, I, I thought you... Well, that you just had changed. Okay. Okay, I will admit one thing. I'm really surprised he went through with it. I really didn't think he had enough nerve. That's as far as I will go. Well, you think it over a little bit, and we'll talk about it later. Well, I, I don't want to talk about it anymore, though. Marriage is over, and that's that. I don't believe you, Monica. Believe oh, me. Oh, good. No, uh, I can't. Monica, is Alan still in the hospital? Well, how about the cat? Haven't you heard? I am Alan, soon to be ex-wife. Alan, tell me you didn't. You didn't file for a divorce. I did. Well, I'll tell you something. I think you're out of your mind. Why would you serve Monica with a divorce paper? I explained all that to you at Bradshaw's party. Oh, don't remind me of that ridiculous episode. Well, would you like me to explain it to you again? Oh, no, you don't have to. I remember it all too clearly. You said I could take the family name and shove it. You also said that your happiness comes first. Oh, you said a lot of things that night, young man, and I told you you would never go through with it. Well, which proved that you were wrong. Oh, and by the way, I didn't say shove it, I said stuff it. Well, bully for you. Is that all you have to say, no, sir? No, I have a lot more to say. For starters, I think that insipid mistress of yours has turned your brains into peanut butter. Don't start! Well, you think about it, Alan. I mean, at least Monica knew how to bring out the tiger in you. Well, a hell of a lot of good it did either one of us. Well, you can say what you want to about Monica, but she is the mother of your son. Your legitimate son. Now tell me, what have you decided to do about that grandson of mine? I intend to get partial custody of him. <laughs> well, exactly what I said before, Alan. You are a fool. Will you give me a break? Why don't you start picking on somebody else for a change? Oh, you mean your mother? What has she done this time anyway? Well, she's in some kind of contact with Robert Scorpio. Oh, Monica mentioned something like that to me the other day. Did she tell you why? No, neither of us had the foggiest notion. Well, I've got to get to the bottom of this. Well, why don't you go to the source? I'll be ri I can't call Robert Scorpio and ask him. No, I'm not talking about Scorpio. Why don't you go to Mother? Go home and ask her. Oh, just like that, man. Just like that. And I will accompany you, and I will charm her, and she'll tell us anything we want to know. Mm. Well, if that doesn't work, I'll intimidate the woman and force her to talk. That won't be necessary, Alan. And I hope not. The thought of her being involved with Robert Scorpio and Luke Spencer sure scares the hell out of me. Finally. Who's that? Just Robert with the pizza. Uh, uh Luke, I, um, uh, I kind of, uh, got waylaid. Sorry about the pizza. What the hell is this? No anchovies. That's what the mouse wants to know. <clears throat> Look, just take your little gun away, send the little mouse around, and we'll put him in a pizza oven. Now, Luke. I'm serious, Robert. This is private property. This boat is my house. Get out. Luke, no, no, look, no, look. Now, this is too much, man. I mean, where does the mouse think he gets his nerve? This uh, is where I get my nerve. <laughs> Hi, guy. Now, which one of you boys is going to tell me how did a bottle of my booze find itself in the trunk of Slick's taxi? Hmm? I'm waiting for an answer. 
<clears throat> How do you know that that uh, is your booze? My booze is Mark Special, and you know it. Now, I'm still waiting for an answer. Look, why don't you pull up a chair, put out the gun, let's have a man-to-mouse talk about this, huh? Well, I, I will have a chair, thank you. Yeah, but the gun stays. Mm. Well, look, uh, this way. You see, that, that bottle of booze was something I picked up offshore, and that came from a leaky rowboat. That's it. <laughs> You're wasting my time, Mr. Jones. I didn't buy that leaky rowboat decoy in the first place. Oh, really? Mm. You didn't buy it? So that, that, he didn't, uh... Oh, yeah. All right. Well... Lost the booze is down in a cargo hold. Ever case. Ever bottle. You were saying, Mr. Jones? Look, you mm -hmm. leave Mr. Jones out of this. If you found booze in my cargo hold that belongs to you, what you gonna do about it? <laughs> I can think of several alternatives, none of which you may find too pleasant. Hey, cool little of threats, will you, Shorty? Who are you You wanna talk, talk, but I'm sick of looking at those guns. <clears throat> Why not? You go on, you settle your business. There's nothing to settle. That booze is my booze. And it was stolen from my warehouse. Stolen is the operative term here, Curly. Okay, we stole it, but then again, so did you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what are you going to do, Robert? Calm down. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Report to the cops, huh? Yeah, you're going to have us arrested for stealing stolen liquor. What do you want from me? A deal? Hmm? I believe we've already made one. <laughs> no way. No way. Listen to me. Yes, there was a raid made on your booze by me and my friends. And yes, we do have it in my cargo hold. So what are you going to do about it? We are not going to be intimidated. Do you understand? I learn from this, Mouse, that Luke and I will buy our liquor from whomever we choose. Now, you want to give us a good price? You've got two customers. If not, well, that's going to be your loss, pal. And judging from what you've been asking for your prices so far, I would say that you're not going to get much business here. It's your club, and it's your necks on the line. Now... I want my booze back. If you get manners like that. Emily Post would be abhorred. You see, we've decided to hang on to your liquor. Call it a belated housewarming present or maybe a goodwill gesture. What? You and the boys. What? Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna forget this very easily. Oh, you'll forget it, all right. You'll forget it so easily that, uh... Maybe we'll even try to forget, uh... The thousands of, uh stolen cases of booze that you have stashed. You know, the police don't know about that. Uh, they might ask, though. You wouldn't. We would. Now, uh, do you want to get the other little rodents off my boat, Mr. Mouse? Don't come back, either, okay? <laughs>